In today's video, there will be no focus stacking. There will be no talk of having an image that's sharp from back to front or front to back. In fact, sharpness all the way through the scene today will be a failure because today I'm out looking for some narrow depth of field images. And I hope you enjoy the video. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. So in today's video, I wanted to kind of turn my usual stuff on its head. A lot of the images that I do, I am trying to get back to front sharpness. Um, you know, I'm, I'm quite often shooting big scenes. I want the foreground sharp, I want the background sharp. And I, you know, I focus stack and do all sorts of other things to make sure that I've got that. But there are other choices. And the choice I'm exploring today is to go for a minimal depth of field to have a subject maybe it's in the foreground maybe it's in the background maybe it's in the midground but having that one subject pin sharp and everything else soft and blurry and out of focus and I'm, of course I'm going to do that by shooting with a large aperture and uh, quite possibly with a longer focal length although of course I could use a wide angle lens very close to something uh, and, a, and a large aperture that would also work. Now I have to say that in my opinion narrow depth of field photography to do it well is actually technically more challenging than getting that back to front sharpness. Back to front sharpness is actually pretty easy you know you check that the background sharp you check that the foreground sharp and Maybe you check that the mid-ground is sharp. And uh, if it's sharp, you've succeeded. But uh, if you're aiming to have you know, just one thing in the scene sharp and everything else out of focus, everything else blurred, I don't think that's quite as easy to judge in the field just looking at the back of the camera. I think there are other factors you have to consider. So what exactly is it that is going to be sharp? How blurred do you want the background or the foreground or both? Uh, and how do you want the transition between the sharp element and the blurred element to be? Do you want it to be a quick transition, a small transition? And that can actually be really tricky to figure out in the field, looking at you know a little screen on the back of the camera to see if you've got it right. So what I'll probably be doing today is shooting for every composition that I find, <laughs> assuming that I find some, um, I'm probably going to shoot three or four different images at different apertures to try to maximise the chance that I get that effect right. So I may shoot you know, with uh, my 70-200 to lens at f2.8, but I might also shoot at f4, f5.6 and maybe even f8 if I'm shooting you know, at that 200mm. At, just so that when I get it back on the computer, I can look and see which one creates the best effect of that narrow depth of field. It's not something that I do often, and uh, that's why I decided to do it today as a bit of an experiment. I hope you'll enjoy it, and if you do, please consider hitting the subscribe button, unless of course you're already a subscriber, in which case thank you very much, I appreciate that. In terms of compositions, I've come into some of the woodland areas uh, here on the side of the mountain, uh, Cabethon de Loro, because I think that's going to offer me the best opportunities to find those kind of scenes. Now, this is not the prettiest woodland in the world. It's all pine trees. It's all quite sort of scrubby because it's, uh, it's an arid environment here, despite the heavy rains that we've had over the last week or so. But uh, hopefully I'll find a composition or two that I can play around with some narrow depth of field photography on. So I'd better get on and see what I can find. Okay, I've got my first scene here. Uh, I'm actually on one of the main trails up on the edge of the woodland and there's a big rock kind of sticking upright, leaning over a little bit. There is a small tree growing out just to one side of it, which I don't want in the frame. There's some grass in the foreground or sort of 
not really grass, but I don't know what it is. So sort of green stuff in the foreground, some grass in the background, and then there's sort of more trees beyond. And the light's just hitting some of the edges of the rock. Uh, the sun's getting a little bit lower now. So, as I said before, I'm shooting this at about, I don't know, probably 136 millimeters, something like that. And I'm going to shoot uh, f2.8, f4, f5.6 and f8, obviously changing my exposure time accordingly. I'm focused on the rock, because I'm actually focused right on the top of the rock, because it's the rock that I want in focus. And hopefully that will then drop the rest of the scene away to a bit of a blur. And uh, by dropping it away to a bit of a blur and maybe adding a little bit of contrast in post, it might look quite nice. Okay, my first shot is 1 one hundredth of a second f2.8. Using the two second timer. 1 50th of a second at f4. And already I think I'm seeing that the f2.8 shot looks better, but that's on the screen here. Okay. f5.6 at 1 25th of a second. Yeah, I think we're starting to get too much, too much detail in the, in the parts other than the rock here. And then 1 13th of a second at f8. And because the shutter speed is now quite a bit slow, I'm just waiting for a break in the breeze. Because although the background is blurry, there is some stuff growing on the rock that I want sharp. My gut feeling is the f2.8 one is going to be the best, but until I get it on the computer, I don't know. Okay, so as I was walking through, as I was walking through, I spotted this bush here, which is very rare for around here. Got some nice autumn colours on it, sort of oranges and reds and golds. So again, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I've got the 70 to 200 lens on, but only at 70 mil. I've got the bush smack in the centre. I'm trying to avoid any distractions all the way around. The bit that I really want to be nice and punchy and sharp is actually right at the front, so I've focused on that. If the back goes a bit softer, back of the bush goes a bit softer, I'm not too worried. But again, I'm going to shoot uh, f2.8 for 1 60th of a second, and then f4 for a 30th, f5.6 for a 15th, and then f8 for an eighth of a second, and just see which one looks best when I get it in post. You know, I keep finding just odd splashes of colour. There's a little bush through there with some lovely orange golden leaves on it. But every angle that I've explored it at, there's something kind of getting in the way, blocking the scene. And if I get too close to the bush, it just loses all of its appeal. It just doesn't look nice. Got to be shot from a distance. And I just cannot find a composition that works. I did take a kind of a quick handheld test shot but I don't think it's gonna work maybe but I don't think so
Okay, we're getting later in the afternoon now. We're only 45 minutes or so before sunset. And the sun's got low enough now that in the woodland areas, all of the light has gone. It's all in shadow now. So I think it's unlikely I'm gonna find another composition. I'm hoping I've got two that have worked. I'll show them to you anyway, and I'll let you know if I think they've worked or not. And of course I'll let you know which, uh, which aperture I used to get the effect that I wanted, because that was kind of the whole point. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's probably gonna be a fairly short one. If you have enjoyed it, and uh, you uh, feel so inclined, then you can hit the thumbs up button and give it a like. You can share it on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and various other things, if you want to. Only if you want to. And of course, you could do both of those things, but only if you want to. If you have enjoyed the video and you're not already a subscriber, then now would be a great time to just tap that subscribe button. Uh, that way you won't miss any of my future videos. Two a week, remember? And uh, of course, I'd love to hear from you, so leave me a comment. Finally, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos, so thank you very much, and until the next one, bye. Oh yeah, we've got some skies. Look at, wait for the auto exposure to, correct. look at those skies, gorgeous. Oranges, reds, streaking patterns across the sky.